All will be covered today in China Undercover. You find our information helpful. Please subscribe and turn on the notification. It will help us get more motivation to produce more quality videos. Now back to the news. House Collapsion On the evening of May 30, first, something unusual happened in a residential area in Tianjin, China, a bustling metropolitan city. The streets in this area suddenly rose and cracked. These cracks extended not only to the sidewalks but also appeared on the lawn. The streets in the neighborhood now had uneven surfaces, with some ground cracks several dozen centimeters wide. Even some underground parking lots had cracks in the walls, causing water seepage. This residential community was built by Country Garden, a well-known Chinese real estate company. The incident affected more than 10 residential towers, all of which experienced ground cracks and sinking. Residents were terrified and chose to sleep outdoors on the lawns or in the streets. In less than 24 hours, the cracks in the ground worsened, as did the cracks on the walls. Elevators started experiencing electrical leaks and some residents had to evacuate overnight with their family. Special police were present in the community, but their actions seemed more focused on maintaining order than providing explanations to the concerned residents. You gotta give us an explanation. It's not enough just filming us. Can you tell us where we can crash tonight? Hey, officers, can you ensure the safety of our stuff and our lives? Seriously, whoever talks gets filmed, but you're not addressing our concerns properly. So far, your response has been all about fixing surface issues, but is that really enough? Our safety matters too, and it seems like you couldn't care less whether we live or die. By June 2nd, more than 2,900 residents were evacuated in an emergency. Some were relocated to nearby hotels, while many went back and forth to their homes to move their belongings. Residents noticed that the condition of the buildings deteriorated each time they returned, with doors even opening automatically due to the tilting of the structures. This incident led to great distress among homeowners. They had invested their savings and emotions into their homes, and the uncertainty of whether they could return was deeply saddening. The cause of this sudden phenomenon remained unclear, but there were speculations about geothermal drilling nearby which may have caused groundwater shifts and contributed to the ground instability. Official experts were still investigating, but residents felt that their safety and property had been jeopardized. The affected buildings were fenced off on June 3rd, with no one allowed to enter. Residents were only permitted to access their homes briefly to retrieve valuables. The situation remained uncertain, leaving homeowners worried about the future of their residences. This unexpected and frightening incident left nearly 3,000 residents facing an uncertain and confusing future, wondering if they would ever be able to return to their homes. You'd think this was some third-world country in China or something. It's beyond belief. Roads just collapsing out of nowhere. It's not just about the roads, though. What's really mind boggling is that people are strolling along and suddenly they're plunging into sewage pits. Look at the number of onlookers. It's pretty darn incredible. Now, if you are out of there in a heartbeat, the stench must have been unbearable. But these folks, they're pulling together, helping each other out, getting people back on their feet. Thankfully, no one got seriously hurt. But here's the thing. When you take a closer look, this isn't just happening in Chongqing. We're talking about the whole country, China. Shoddy construction projects are popping up all over the place. And let us tell you about the roads in Luoyang. Cars. Cruising along and then BAM! A hole appears. This incident went down on June 21st and a white car literally nosedived into this gaping pit, landing upside down. Two people managed to crawl out of that car thanks to some good Samaritans. They're saying this construction work is just plain awful. No earthquakes, no strong winds, no rain, but somehow, Vehicles end up nose, diving into a pit. So, what's the deal? It seems like all this massive infrastructure development in China, it's, well, shaky to put it mildly. And it's not just the roads. Even the sidewalks have holes that are swallowing people up. There are too many incidents just falling through the ground like it's nobody's business. And it's not isolated. It's a nationwide issue. We can look at those sidewalks. They're basically traps, and people are falling right into them. Some are even disappearing into the road itself. Now, let's talk about the construction quality. Incident 1. The Chongqing Sinkhole One glaring example of the severity of tofu constructions is a massive sinkhole in Chongqing that resembles a scene from a disaster movie. 
This sinkhole, indicative of the issue's extent, serves as a visual reminder of the dangers posed by supper construction practices. It is imperative to note that this incident is not unique to Chongqing but reflects a larger nationwide concern. Incident 2. Jiang Su's Glasses Shop Catastrophe Another harrowing incident took place in Jiang Su, Lianyan Gang, at a glasses shop. Two individuals were engaged in casual conversation when suddenly a man fell through the second floor, his leg dangling precariously. This shocking incident underscores the unpredictable nature of tofu construction, leaving citizens in a state of fear and disbelief. People rightfully question building management's responsibility, as such incidents compromise the safety and well-being of those who frequent such establishments. Widespread Structural Degradation The repercussions of tofu constructions extend beyond singular incidents and encompass entire buildings. Numerous structures across the country exhibit alarming signs of decay and instability, including tilting and crumbling. Importantly, this deterioration is not a result of inherent instability but rather a consequence of shoddy construction practices that compromise structural integrity, inadequate materials, and workmanship. The quality of construction materials and workmanship has deteriorated to an alarming degree. In one notable instance, an individual was captured on video bending steel bars with their bare hands, highlighting the extreme vulnerability of these string vulnerability of these structures due to subpar materials and construction techniques. This vulnerability endangers the lives of occupants and passers be alike. In addition, a few months ago, the State Council of China finally discussed and approved the investigative report on a particularly devastating building collapse. It's worth noting that this official announcement came more than a year after the tragic incident. According to the official report, released on May 21, 2023, a total of 63 individuals were trapped under the rubble during this catastrophe. This included 50 university students, 11 businessmen, along with other people, and two homeowners with their families. Tragically, 54 people lost their lives in this tragedy, with a significant number of them being university students, totaling 44. The report provides a grim timeline of events, stating that the building's collapse occurred in just four seconds at 12.21 a.m. On April 29, 2022, it all began when the eastern wall of the second floor restaurant emitted an unusual sound, causing objects to fall from the ceiling. Just three minutes later, at 12.24 a.m., the entire structure collapsed vertically, taking only four seconds to complete its destruction. The investigation revealed that the main cause of this catastrophic collapse was the property owner's illegal modifications to the building. They had added extra stories and floors to expand it for rental purposes. Shockingly, local government authorities turned a blind eye to these violations. In the initial aftermath of the collapse in 2022, the communist government had claimed that 23 people were trapped inside, with 5 being rescued and 39 still missing. Now that the official report is public, it has ignited widespread online discussions. Many are deeply saddened by the loss of 44 university students and are questioning how a university dormitory could become such a dangerous building. They reflect on the fact that many of today's college students are the only children in their families who have strived hard to get into college but lose their lives tragically. Parents who have invested so much hope and effort into their children's education are left wondering how to carry on. Another point of contention is the considerable delay in releasing the investigation results and assigning accountability. Despite the severity of the accident, it took a full year for officials to make the findings public. As for accountability, Four senior officials at the provincial or ministerial level, as well as 58 public officials at various levels connected to the incident, faced disciplinary actions. The most severe penalties imposed were party warnings and political demerits, effectively meaning no real consequences. This incident highlights a widespread issue in China, where officials within the CCP often protect one another and engage in corrupt practices involving power and money. This culture of impunity for those in positions of authority has resulted in frequent cases of substandard and dangerous construction projects across the country, earning them the moniker Tofu Projects. Now, let's talk about a situation in Guizhou, China. 
Guizhou is known for its tough economic conditions. In the past, a tragic incident occurred when homeless children sought shelter in a dumpster during extreme cold, resulting in extreme cold, resulting in accidental death. In response, the government invested a substantial amount of money, 90 million yuan, approximately 450 million Taiwan dollar, to construct four large buildings, including an opera house, museum, concert hall, and science museum. However, a recent incident unfolded in the newly constructed opera house shortly after its completion. This incident happened during a May Day event. The stage, which was designed with a hydraulic system for elevation, malfunctioned, causing the entire stage to drop abruptly. Initially, some spectators believed it was part of the performance, but when they heard screams, it became evident that something was seriously amiss. An investigation revealed that the stage's primary support was constructed using wood, which proved insufficient. This significant investment in the Opera House was marred by subpar construction practices, notably the use of wood as the primary support for the stage. Additionally, in Guzoi, there have been concerns regarding utility poles. Historically, these poles were made of wood and had a single central support. Later on, they transitioned to using reinforced concrete, often containing at least one steel rod for added strength. However, during a heavy snowstorm, it became apparent that these poles weren't as sturdy as they should have been. This event report sheds light on a concerning incident related to construction practices and infrastructure quality in mainland China, as revealed in the latest reports from Tofu Projects via the EBCC Time Channel in Hong Kong. The incident in question raises significant questions about the safety, durability, and reliability of public infrastructure projects in the region. Upon close examination of the incident, several disconcerting findings emerged. Utility Pole Breakage The incident primarily involves the unexpected breakage of a utility pole. The pole snapped and became lodged in its position. This raised questions about the construction quality and safety standards employed in its creation. Improper reinforcement. It was discovered that rather than employing standard steel reinforcements, wires had been used in the middle of the utility pole. Shockingly, upon inspection, it was apparent that there was no steel reinforcement within the pole, only plain cement. This lack of structural integrity posed serious concerns about the pole's ability to support its load. Substandard construction. The utility pole was entirely composed of cement with only two decorative wires on one side. This composition, lacking steel reinforcement, was considered a grave safety hazard. Community concerns? Local residents expressed justified anger and frustration over the subpar construction quality. They likened the situation to working with clay, emphasizing the poor workmanship involved in twisting two wires and leaving it in such a condition. Quality of roads? Additionally, residents also voiced their dissatisfaction with the quality of roads in Taiwan, raising broader concerns about infrastructure standards. Public Reaction This incident has triggered a significant public outcry, drawing parallels to past incidents of shoddy construction, such as the 1998 Wen Trun earthquake, which resulted in injuries and fatalities due to inferior construction work. While many were implicated and some faced legal consequences for their actions at that time, the incident underscores that issues of substandard construction persist. Construction Materials One of the most shocking discoveries during the investigation was the use of reed stalks instead of steel reinforcement within the utility pole. Reed stalks were identified as the primary support structure. This departure from conventional construction practices is a matter of grave concern and is considered a serious deviation from safety standards. Premier's Warning The incident brings to mind the warning issued by Premier Zhu Rongji in September 1998 when he witnessed the Yangtze River Levy's destruction due to floods, labeling it as the result of using bean curd dredge. It is worth noting that the Yangtze River dike had to be repaired by the People's Liberation Army to avert a disaster. China Speed and Rapid Development the incident further highlights the phenomenon known as China Speed, where there is a relentless push for rapid and innovative development. While this approach has led to the rapid transformation of cities, it has also raised concerns about the prioritization of speed over construction, quality, and safety. In another case, 
A high-rise building meant to connect Shanghai to Kunming via a high-speed highway collapsed during construction. Even though it was supposed to meet strict engineering standards, this kind of poor construction, often referred to as tofu dreg projects, is unfortunately not uncommon in China. Besides, there was a tornado in Jiangsu, China, which was highly unusual for the region. It caused significant destruction and casualties, including the collapse of buildings and severe damage to infrastructures. In addition to these incidents in China, there have been reports of Chinese-built projects failing in other countries, particularly in Africa. This has led to a reputation for substandard construction quality associated with Chinese projects abroad. The alarming rise of tofu construction in China poses a significant threat to public safety and the integrity of the built environment. These incidents are not isolated occurrences, but are indicative of a broader problem that permeates construction projects throughout the country. Urgent action is required at various levels, including regulatory authorities, construction companies, and building management to address this crisis. Public safety must take precedence, and stringent measures should be implemented to enforce construction quality standards, ensuring that buildings are structurally sound and pose no unnecessary risks to the lives of citizens. It is imperative that these issues be confronted comprehensively to prevent further disasters and protect the well-being of the Chinese population. And that is today's episode. If you found this video informative, please subscribe and ring a bell to get notification. Thank you for watching and see you next time.